I apologize because of my voice. It uh, happened something this morning, actually. So I'll try to do my best, but uh, <clears throat> it's not in a, in a good condition. Actually, uh, as you see from the title, actually this is a talk on engineering electromagnetics addressing some questions about entropy. So I'm, I'm no physicist, I'm neither physicist nor philosopher. I'm electrical engineer with a deep interest for uh, questions on foundations of electromagnetics uh, from, of course, uh, physics and philosophy. So this is the outline of my talk. So introductory considerations, of course, are related to Maxwell equations and uh, some uh, expressions that are derived from Maxwell equations, primary retarded potentials, wave equations, and so on. Then I try to say something about entropy aspects of classical electromagnetics in general. I will talk something about entropy of radiation reaction of the bunch of electrons. And finally, I will try to give you some example from engineering, uh, from real world, actually connection of electromagnetic thermal considerations uh, with emphasis to application in bioelectromagnetics and of course concluding remarks. So it's uh, composed as a conference talk from an engineering conference. Okay, so when you talk about the engineering electromagnetics, everything starts and uh, end with the uh, Maxwell equations. So let's see what's the physical meaning beyond the, the equations. So the first Maxwell equation says that time wearing magnetic flux density will give rise to the electric field. On the other hand, we have conductive currents, or better say the conductive current densities and displacement current density, which give rise to the uh, magnetic field. The third Maxwell equation, let's say, says electric monopoles can exist. And there are no magnetic monopoles. It's a differential Gauss law for the, for the magnetic field. So what is interesting and what is a first connection to the entropy? Actually, the reason why I started to try to find some answers from either philosophical and, and physical papers is the wave equations that is uh, readily uh, derived from Maxwell equations. So this is, a, I would say, a special case in a history of science where Maxwell anticipated the very existence of the electromagnetic waves. So he did that just with his 20 uh, scalar equations. Then uh, many years ago, uh, many years after that, they were rewritten by, uh, independently by Hertz and Heaviside into the vectorial form. But from these 20 scalar equations, Maxwell anticipated the existence of electromagnetic waves. So it's a, uh, let's say, undergraduate course for my students. So it's easily to derive magnetic uh, so, uh, wave equations from, uh, from Maxwell equations for, for any quantity you like, electric field, magnetic field, or let's say magnetic vector potential. But then we have, I would say, something which is puzzling. If you solve these equations, uh, for <coughs> if, if you know the, the uh, sources of electromagnetic field within the volume, then you find out that these equations has two solutions. And these solutions are very well known as a retarded potential and advanced potential. Uh, this is a current density. And uh, this is the time at the observation point. This is the time at the source point. And this is the distance from the source point to the observation point. If you go to the next slide, we can see that we have something here which is a simple time delay. So, oh, I know why. There's the, there's the problem with this button. OK, so this is simply a time required for the signal to arrive from the source point to the observation point. And everything is OK with the retarded potential because from this simple expression, the signal is delayed in the observation point with respect to the source. OK, so this is the source. This is the observation point, And we have some time required 
for the electromagnetic signal to arrive at the observation point, which is exactly related to this delay. But on the other hand, there is a second solution, which says the signal is advanced at the observation point with respect to the source, and this automatically means signalization in the past. Okay, so if you take a look at the standard textbook of uh, not only engineering electromagnetics, but standard textbooks on many books on physics, you will just drop the advanced solutions by saying it's a non-physical. But the problem is that it's mathematically completely correct solution. So, moreover, with advanced solution, we can uh, actually represent the situation as you take into account just the retarded solution. So how do we get rid of this, uh, let's say, non-physical solution or, uh, let's say, uh, advanced potentials? These solutions are eliminated by describing the initial and boundary condition. So what is uh, very important in, uh, in science, science is not just the solution of the differential integral or variational equation, but also something which is accompanied to this differential equation solution. It's a matter of initial and boundary condition. I think it's a very nice statement of, of one philosopher who says that by definition, there is no anything existed before the t equals zero, before the initial condition. So the, the other thing is, of course, empirical. We do not observe the uh, converging waves in the nature. If we drop uh, a stone in the, in the water, of course, there are diverging waves not converging. And here we have the, this obvious asymmetry in uh, time symmetrical, let's say, laws of electromagnetics, which is called radiation error. There are, let's say, different opinions of, uh, of prominent researchers in this regard, but the question still remains open. And uh, moreover, uh, I would like to address something which is called time reversal in, uh, in electromagnetics. Actually, if something is completely time invariant, then if you put instead of time variable, time variable minus t, everything would be the same. But it's not actually in, in, in a complete set of Maxwell equations. You have to do something you can call or mathematical trick, or you can call it physically uh, something which is uh, uh, plausible. For example, if you have, let's put it like this. So this is the second Maxwell equation. If you want to uh, do a time reversal of this, it's not enough just to put minus t. You have to put minus to the magnetic field and minus to the current density. So there is a lot of controversy and some disagreement between philosophers, physicists, and engineers. And uh, if you want to know my opinion, it's actually the opinion of the engineering community that this minus should be taken into account because if you reverse the time, you reverse the velocity of the charge, and if you uh, reverse the velocity of charge, you reverse the current density, and you reverse the orientation of the magnetic field. It's not the only problem. If you want to do this for the uh, lossless media, 
then this section is okay. If you want to do this for the lossy media, you have to impose so-called loss inverted medium. So as you, as you can see, there are lots of problems or a lot of interesting issues, I would say, in classical, even engineering electromagnetics regarding the uh, retarded potentials, regarding the time reversal or time invariance of Maxwell equations, and it's not, and it's not the whole story. Uh, all we did with, uh, let's say, retarded potential in engineering electromagnetics in last more than 120 years was related to the uh, electromagnetic radiation scattering antennas. And it's also very nice stuff with work which worked pretty well. But actually, there is one question. Where does the radiation come from in classical electromagnetics? So it's a, it's a very well known fact. We, we have accelerated charges producing radiation. And here we can pose the same question. Why do the accelerated charges produce retarded and not advanced radiation? There, there are possible answers, but uh, uh, one way or another we will come, actually I, I was interested in this question, so I try to find some answers, and more or less you come to the uh, from radiation error, you come to the thermodynamic error, uh, error, and you come to the entropy cosmological error, and finally to the so-called past hypothesis. So it's all about the uh, extremely low entropy state, which is uh, required in the beginning of the universe, which is called past hypothesis. Anyway, uh, when you talk about the electrons, uh, when they are accelerated, they somehow resist. We, we have this not only in this theoretical uh, consideration, but uh, if you try to uh, design, compute, analyze any kind of a, of a real radiating system, real kind of antennas, you will have something which is called radiation resistance, which is, uh, how to say, taken for granted by, by engineers, but where does it come from? Because actually, if you, if you have an electron which is accelerated and radiating, there is a so-called uh, back reaction force. We can, we can imagine like we have a cannonball and back reaction force. So actually, the electron is somehow, radi uh, uh, somehow interacted with its own electric field. There is an interesting... Uh, explanation by, given by absorber theory, when we can have the electron which is radiating not only in the future, but also to the past, or we can say uh, we have uh, the both potentials, retarded and advanced, and if we carry out some calculations, then none of the advanced waves survives, and what remains are the retarded waves. So this is a sort of introduction, some questions, which even in engineering electromagnetics, when I say engineering electromagnetics, macroscopic fields and uh, uh, some charged particles which are moving with non-relativistic velocities, that could be addressed with the notion of entropy, primarily radiation error, time reversal, time invariance or not, and then to the to the even thermodynamic and then cosmological, cosmological uh, arrow. Uh, let's see another stuff. So if we, if we go to the very heart of the classical electromagnetic theory, after Maxwell, there came so-called Maxwellians, and uh, the general law of conservation of energy stored in the electromagnetic field was finally posed uh, somewhere in the in the 90s of 18th century, of 19th century by pointing. So here we have a well-known pointing theorem. It's very easy to analyze it because we have the source of energy. We can imagine a volume. Within the volume, we have a source of energy, electromagnetic energy like chemical battery or whatever. So here we have 
the field and the current density produced by that source. Then we have the rate of change of the electric energy and magnetic energy, or let's say the energy stored in the capacitance or in the inductance. Then we have joule, uh, joule heat, or let's say ohmic losses. And finally, we have the power flow from the volume or into the volume, depending on the, uh, mathematically speaking, depending on the uh, sign of this, of this surface integral. So once again, the left-hand side denotes a source pumping energy with the considered volume. First term on the right-hand side is the time rate of the energy. So this is actually the, the balance equation of the power. If you want to, to have energy, of course, you integrated it over time. OK, so uh, let's see some, some more definitions. So the space-time density of power flow is given by famous pointing vector. We can even play with, uh, you can do it by playing uh, uh, by the quantity of movement in the electromagnetic field. And you can derive the equivalent electromagnetic mass. It's uh, just this power density divided by, by velocity cubed. Then you, you can also come up with the electromagnetic force. You can express electromagnetic force in terms of electromagnetic pressure. So you have these interesting correlations of uh, electromagnetics with some mechanics. Uh, also, you can analyze uh, the uh, pointing theorem in the complex domain just to come up with uh, uh, radiated power with the active power, which produce some work, and the imaginary power, which is related to the oscillation of the uh, energy reactive power in the, in the near field. Okay, so how to uh, connect this with entropy? Well, it's, uh, it's uh, well known in, in uh, thermodynamics, but now we analyze the the electromagnetic energy, the density of electromagnetic energy, power density. So just, we can just uh, consider a cylinder or cavity of certain volume with the walls at a given temperature. And uh, one of the cylinder walls is assumed to be a movable, like a like a piston. And changing the volume of the cylinder, we can do some work as the piston is, of course, displaced. So this is something that was pointed out many times these two days. And uh, uh, yesterday, we did a very nice talk given, given by Franjo, so I will not go to details. So we have the first law of electrodynamics. This is the internal energy, heat flow into the volume, the work done in the volume. S is for entropy. And we can play from uh, thermodynamics, this pressure is equal to the one, ter uh, one third of the, of the electromagnetic uh, radiation density. And through some elementar, uh, elementary mathematics, we arrange this in a way that the entropy is expressed in terms of these uh, relations of uh, energy, energy density. So if you do some other mathematical exercises and uh, taking into account that uh, uh, this is the exact differential for entropy, we have these two expressions. And now there is a very simple mathematical procedure. You take the partial derivative over time here and partial derivative over volume here. And you, of course, do some equating of this. And you just arrive to a simple first order differential equation whose solution is, of course, the Stefan Boltzmann law or the radiation of the, of the black body. OK, so moving to the entropy of uh, radiation reaction. How can we account for the entropy here? As I already mentioned, electromagnetic radiation is a phenomenon which is caused due to electric acceleration of the charged particle. But here, I would like to give you something also from engineering, because, uh, OK, we are analyzing for the fundamental stuff. We are analyzing the uh, 
moving uh, particle, but for the uh, real radiating system, we have to analyze the uh, smooth current density. So let's see how can we do it. Uh, one of the differences between the fundamental stuff and the, the let's say, real, real world problems is that real problems are mathematically more demanding and you have to uh, somehow develop the methods which are approximate in a sense of numerical solution of such problems. So it's interesting that uh, it started in, uh, for example, for the, for the radiation stuff, it started in 1897 by uh, English guy Henry Cable Pocklington. Okay, so uh, if we analyze the radiation of charged particles in addition to Maxwell equations, it's not enough because Maxwell equations are dealing with uh, uh, continuous distributions of electromagnetic sources and we need the Lorentz force equation for the, for the moving particle. Okay, so if we uh, play with Maxwell equations, these are the fields of the moving particle. It's not a problem to derive that and finally, there is something which is, which is interesting, uh, uh, well-known uh, solution for the radiation re uh, reaction force. And uh, this is related to the radiation resistance for the charged particle. And uh, let's see how can we account for this in, uh, in engineering electromagnetics for the smooth current density. So instead of moving particle, we have current density. And uh, just to, to give you, uh, let's say, comparison between physical and engineering quantities in engineering electromagnetics, instead of uh, this uh, force, back reaction force, we like to deal with radiation resistance, which is related to this ratio of the power at the antenna input and the corresponding square of the current at the input. So if we have a continuous current density over the wire, uh, let's see, we start from the same equations and with the play with the same quantities, but finally we end up with something which causes mathematical problems because we have current distribution over the over the conductor, over the wire, uh, which by using some tang tangential conditions for the electric field at the surface of the wire, the easiest way is to uh, assume the perfect conductivity of the wire, but it's not a problem to take into account the final conducti finite conductivity. It's a, a bit more mathematical effort, but uh, it's, it's not uh, significant. And uh, this is the so-called scatter field. And finally, here is a problem. We end up with a so-called integral equation, with a Fredholm type integral equation, and we don't know this current distribution. So if we deal, instead of one particle, if we deal with a smooth current density, we have integral equation. And this is a corresponding green function. I will not go to mathematical details too much, but I will just say that uh, it's not possible to solve this integral equation analytically. It is possible, but with uh, a lot of approximations. So for the, uh, let's say, some problems where you need to do uh, something with this current distribution, like to compute mutual impedance or input impedance, it's simply not accurate enough. So uh, engineering approach is to do it approximately by, by using numerical methods and implementation of numerical methods on a, on a computer. So what do we do? Or we oh, sorry. Uh, we just express the unknown current distribution in terms of known functions, unknown coefficients, and the point is, not to give you too much details, that we transfer this integral equation into the matrix equation and this 
matrix equation, or let's say the system of algebraic equation is sold on a computer. And, uh, okay, we can skip this. And finally, this is a simple example for a dipole antenna. We are all familiar with dipole antenna radiating at a certain frequency. And this is the, the solution that is obtained by using numerical methods. Okay, getting back to the subject. So, uh, if you want to do something with the entropy of radiation reaction, it was interesting. I was, I was looking for some papers and they are, how to say, surprising, surprisingly fresh. The papers uh, from 2013, 14, 15 in review physics dealing with this problem. So, uh, if we have uh, of course, we are, if you are talking about the entropy, it's hard to, to take one electron. We have to have a system of, of charged particles or let's say a bunch of electrons. And uh, what we have to take, on, take into account is, uh, okay, uh, the interaction of particles in a way, if we isolate one electron, then we can say, okay, Let's put the external electric and magnetic field, a sort of average value, which is arriving from the uh, other particles. But taking into account what I was talking before, due to radiation reaction, we have to take this. So this is the so-called uh, abraham lorentz equation. And this is the expression I've showed before. This one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was a problem with, uh, with the PDF and PowerPoint and different, different versions. So this is the uh, acceleration, actually. So, sorry, this is an engineering problem. <laughs> OK, so here we have. Uh, this is what you, what you are asking for, uh, because here we have uh, now the, the, because we have acceleration here and we have the third, third derivative. And now, okay, so uh, now we come up with a Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. And uh, if we play a little bit with Abraham-Lorentz equation, when I say play a little bit, it's a five or six pages of appendix in, in re review, review uh, re uh, in a paper uh, published in, in uh, uh, physics review letters. And uh, finally, what is interesting that we have this derivation of internal energy where we have a slight, I would say, interplay with the uh, Maxwell equations with a smooth distribution and with a point electron with point charges. So now we take into account the Gauss law. And uh, here we have n electrons within a volume which, which is unchangeable. And we come up with this and uh, taking into account the first law of thermodynamics we obtain something like this. So th there are many steps in derivation, but uh, somehow we can say that if we have a bunch of electrons radiating, there are somehow there is a system which is, which is heating and there is a entropy which is definite, a positive. Uh, yes, yes, equals, sorry, <laughs> uh, I, should, I should have taken a, a PowerPoint instead of PDF, but in PowerPoint with different uh, versions, uh, I lost my vector signs, so, okay, that's it. So, uh, finally, if I have, how much time do I have? Uh, no, you, you are in negative time. <laughs> So time okay. Sorry for this. I will I will go I will go really really fast. Okay. So 
this is something which is really widely used in, in, in bioelectromagnetics. So, so, so what do we do? Uh, from uh, heat conduction law, we can derive uh, the heat conduction equation, very well known in uh, engineering and physics. But uh, conduction is not enough for, uh, for a bioelectromagnetics because if we are interested in heating, or let's say, human body from the external source, we need to input the convective term. So this convective term is uh, given in a terms of the difference between the surface temperature and the temperature of the fluid. That means, let's say, temperature of the skin and temperature of the air. And this is the uh, convective heat transfer coefficient. And uh, OK, here we have something which is called uh, space-time dependent bioheat transfer equation. So it's, it's interesting to see how we engineers borrow the models from the from, from, from physics and uh, mathematical physics and, uh, and classical thermodynamics. So if you, if you just take this part and put everything to zeros, you have the heating of the power cable. If you put this term, which is convective, convective in nature, you have the volume blood profusion. This part stands for the metabolic heat sources, and this part is a sort of in intruder in the original Penas equation, which was derived in 1948 for f physiological purposes. And this intruder is actually given in the form of uh, power density, which is absorbed as an additional heating source, for example, when you talk to the, to the mobile phone. Uh, if you want to, well, consider a continuous exposure, then you don't uh, have to take into account the transient. And this stationary Penas equation is a little bit simplified. So once again, here we have thermal conductivity. So the conductivity of the, due to conductivity of the tissue. Here we have volume uh, perfusion rate, specific uh, uh, heat of the blood, power produced by metabolic processes, and this electromagnetic power deposition. Of course, it's uh, can be written in a, in a form of Helmholtz equation with the prescribed boundary condition. Solution is carried out uh, numerically. I will not go to the details. But this is something I would like to show you. So this is the uh, model of the, of the real head, taking into account geometry and some properties of the tissue uh, we have built up in, in our group. So uh, if you do some calculations. For example, you can come up with a so-called specific absorption rate, or let's say power density in the human eye. And uh, just for information, the peaks are on the GSM frequency, frequency of your mobile phone. So be aware what you do when you use, when you use mobile phones. OK, this is a temperature increase in the eye. And you can do the same, for example, for the brain, electromagnetic part of the story, uh, the, the same equation for the bioheat transfer equation, the same numerical method. And for example, here we have calculated temperatures rise in the, in the human, human brain model. So in my negative time, I come to the concluding remarks. So I try to somehow make a connection with the engineering, electromagnetics, and some aspects of, or let's say, some issues of entropy. So I talked about the microscopic and uh, microscopic points of view. Uh, we addressed the entropy of a bunch of charged particles, and I've shown you electromagnetic thermal dosimetry example arising from bioelectromagnetics. So uh, those are selected references. I, uh, took a lot of papers by, by D. Cole, so I put just, just one without, without special references. And it is, uh, uh, let's say, engineering electromagnetic suspects can be found, for example, in the book that was written 
by me and uh, Professor Kamlich Idrisi from uh, Université Clermont-Ferrand. Uh, it was funny that it was published just before the uh, France-Croatia final, so uh, <laughs> it, it was a, a nice coincidence. And uh, this was me last year visiting Maxwell's uh, birdhouse in Edinburgh. Uh, so I really want to end up with this slide uh, with the picture of this amazing physicist who, who gave so, so much in either thermodynamics and electromagnetics. Thank you very much for attention. Sorry for <laughs> That means it's a perfect or disaster or both. <laughs> okay. Too much entropy. Yeah. Uh, so um, maybe, uh, so we were, we were late.